Welcome to Getting Started Part 2 for Grades 6 through 12. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here with us. And I just wanted to share that I'm Tara Brum. I am a Seesaw Ambassador, a third through fifth grade teacher for 19 years, and then I jumped into middle school math and have been there ever since. And so I'm, I'm enjoying the middle school life, teaching seventh grade math, coming to you from Cary, North Carolina. You can connect with me and feel free to on Twitter at Mrs. Brum Tweets and on Instagram at Mrs. Brum Math. So thanks so much for being with us. We do have certificates available to show that you have completed this Seesaw course. And if you are watching live, your certificates will be emailed to you. If you are watching a recording of this, you will need to listen for a code during the session. It is a six digit code. And then you will need to fill out the form to get the certificate using that six digit code. So thank you so much for being with us and willing to learn and share and spend your free time. You're here because you are, are ready to know what to do now. What do I do next? I'm getting started and I want to know what to do next. So I, if you're here, you've already watched the Getting Started with Seesaw Part 1 and that was probably with me and I was hosting it. So thanks for coming back for more. But hopefully you've already watched that. That's why you're here for Part 2. You have also already created a teacher account and a class. And that was something that we went over in part one on how to create a class. So you have your teacher account and your class created. And we are going to jump in here to talk about what we're going to explore today. So today we are going to get you started with students and really dive into um, you know the things that you can do and the steps that you can take and a checklist that will help you to ensure that you're off to a good start and you feel successful and your students do as well. We're going to talk about connecting families and how that can benefit you even in the middle and high school classrooms and also dive a little bit into the Seesaw Activity Library where there are thousands of ideas that you can implement in your classroom and really make fit the content um, of you know, your curriculum and your course. If you have questions, we will have a nice chunk of time if you're live with us to uh, do a question answer session. And um, I'm excited about uh, having those questions from you. So if you have them, please, um, please feel free to type them in and I'm going to take a look at them towards the end uh, if you are live with us. You can get today's slides at the bit.ly that you see at the bottom of your screen. Feel free to, um, to grab that. And again, if you are um, watching this live, then that will be emailed to you with the recording and the certificate. If you're watching a recording, feel free to grab the slides from that bit.ly. All right. Let's get started with our students. Now that we kind of have an idea and you've been in as a student in my classroom where I was the teacher, now we're transferring that power to you. You're getting started with your students and we're gonna walk through what you can use to help you get started. The first thing you would want to do would be to add your students to your class. And um, I briefly went over in the part one of how to add the students. You would need to consider thinking about how are you going to add them? Do you have um, a school email or a school, school Google that they can use? Most middle and high schools have one of those, if not both of those. Or if you do not, totally completely fine, you can use the class code sign-in. That's what we used in the part one professional development um, getting started. And that's also totally fine. These are principles so that you can follow the step by step. And um, you know, I think it's it's 
really handy for you to have them to print and you know keep by your side and you have access to them there through those bitlies that um, you can have if you'd like to just some people just like to hold on to it right you want to hold on and determine how are you going to get your students in and um, then we're going to dive into the getting started guide so the getting started guide can be found at the bit.ly you see there bit.ly slash seesaw getting started please know that's case sensitive so if you're typing it in and not clicking on it it is case sensitive and um, you know there are different types of getting started guides the whole way from kindergarten through high school uh, one thing to know is that there will be a big long list there um, for our purposes, 6 through 12, we all have the same getting started guide, so I think that you'll appreciate that, and I'm actually going to uh, give a little click on it and walk you through it so we can take, take a look here. The getting started guide, um, this is where you would go to. It goes right to the Seesaw Help Center. And um, you can see that you get to pick and choose your grade level. So even if I'm saying I'm an eighth grade teacher and I click on the eighth grade getting started guide, what you can see is that the final copy here is six through 12. So anything six through 12 is all the same. Uh, so you can, take a look at this PDF with me. We're gonna walk through it so you feel comfortable with what's here. Uh, hopefully maybe you got even a chance to browse it a little bit or you've used it, which if you have, that's awesome. Um, so, you know, the first thing you have this table of contents, whoops, I'm going a little fast here for myself, but you, you can see, um, excuse me, there we go you could just flip right where you want to go and say, oh, I just want to be on page six because well, I want to get my students hands on. But if you're truly getting started, we do walk teachers through of what is Seesaw. So even if you know you have a teacher friend who has not watched my part one, they could use this getting started guide uh, to get them going. And um, we can, you know, see here from this great visual how we begin and how it is very cyclical and how, you know, there's a there's a process, but, you know, you can get yourself started. And I love the images that go with it. I think that that works really great with the flow of Seesaw and where you start to where you go. Um, there's also how Seesaw works, and this just talks briefly about the views in Seesaw, which we did talk about in part one. So that student view versus the teacher view, and they are very similar. I'm sure you've noticed that. Uh, just basically the parts and the pieces and all of this would um, just be simply for the uh, the free Seesaw version. If you have a paid version, there are other um, are other features that you might be able to use, but this kind of really just shows the basics here for both students and teachers and the views and have has a, a brief description. Uh, below that, there is one of my favorite things, which is the teacher checklist. Um, so it's a step-by-step -step guide that allows you to say, okay, I created my account, check, uh, which hopefully you're already there. You created your class, check right and then you're ready to add your students so i just wanted to very briefly go back into a brand new class that i created and this is brand new here like i don't have any other classes this is what it would look like if you were brand new and getting started and you just added one class so um, most six through 12 teachers teach more than one class period, every school calls it their own thing, but um, you can add more classes in here and name them whatever you would like to name them. And once you have that class in there, um, you know, every time you add a new class, whether it's your first time adding a class or your 25th time adding a class, this video is gonna pop up and feel free to watch that video if you truly are getting started. Uh, but in addition to that, um, that will go away as soon as you put your first post in there. The way you're gonna add your students is through this plus button down here. You're gonna add students and you can click on that. This is where you're going to decide, do you want students to sign in to Seesaw using their Google account or email address. 
So if you have a school Google account for students or a school email address for students, you would say yes. And I think the majority of us may fall into that category, but there are gonna be some schools that do not, totally fine, you would say no. I'll show you both real quick. If you said no, but, um, and we use shared devices because my students were not one-to-one, -one. some kids maybe bring their own device, every school situation is different. So we'll just say we're shared devices. And this is where you can add uh, student names, um, you know, add the names in there. And what I would recommend that you do is have at least six names in. Uh, it's six is kind of a seesaw magic number. You can also, which is my favorite here, is paste the list of names in. So, you know, copy it from something that you already have and paste those names in. But remember, it's one per line. It does remind you of that. Uh, six is Seesaw's magic number when you're doing this because then it won't send you any reminders about how you need to add more students. And what it will do when you click the green check to submit is that it gives you this step-by-step -step of how to get the students signed in. Now remember, we chose signing in with a class code. Um, so what that means is we're scanning this this code and that's what we did when we signed in. This is also a uh, uh, for the, the getting started part one. This is also a place where you can print that student sign-in poster. I use this poster for the getting started part one. Uh, this was the one I talked about. Um, it showed images of where we don't put, you know, don't put it on social media or have it hanging in your room. We're going to take pictures and post those to social media. But this is a great thing if you're using this to just laminate that and hang it up in your room for the entire school year. Um, but that's one way to get started. Another way to get started, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class. So we're going to say new class two. Maybe that's my second period. Uh, if your school already has Google Classroom set up, you can import your class list. I know some schools set that up for teachers ahead of time. They call it whatever they want to um, call it, but you can import directly from there. Or you can just create your own class in you know, 11th grade. And then from here, again, you'll see that video because I haven't posted anything. As soon as I post the first thing, it's going to, that's going to go away. And I'll add my students here and I want to say, do I want to use the, the uh, Google or email address? Yes. And look, I don't have to put a single name in because what I'm doing is following the directions here where they are going to join my class. Then they're going to use their either their Google or their email and sign in. And um, then I can also email directions to my students so that maybe that's homework and you're like, check your email. Your homework is sign in to my Seesaw class and you can get each one of your class periods, you know, send them you know, send your emails out uh, that way as well, just to ensure that everybody gets connected if you, you know, run out of time in class or just truly want it to be a homework assignment. Um, so you have all of that in there um, to add your students and you just saw me add, we'll call it a new class period. So here's my first period class, here's my second period class, just by clicking on my name, that profile icon, and then creating the class. So let's go back to that getting started guide because we wanted to make sure that you could create your account, create your class, and add your students. The first thing that you would want to have students do would be, whoops, I keep going a little too fast there, would be to create a post, right? And we played around with that in getting started part one where we clicked on the green add button and we were able to um, play around as a student. But what you might choose to do for your students the very first time, first period, first time, let's get to that class, you can click on that green add button. And what you would do, and it even prompts you, try posting as a student, you would want to post student work, then click on that. Before I do that, if you're joining with a recording, you would want to write down the first part of your six digit code. It is six, eight, three. If you're joining live, no worries about the code. So he, from here, maybe what I wanna do is do a drawing real quick and I want to add um, a shape and you know, I'm just giving an example here and we can play around with this, whatever it might be. I love Seesaw, here we go. And I'm gonna add it in 
And I'm just a teacher, so I want to post it to my sample students journal because I'm just demonstrating in my class. That's a really handy one to have turned on in, in your settings and keep that. And it even prompts me, oh, you need to save your post because you took too long. That green check is going to do that. And that's my sample. And my students will, will be listed in there. And I can see the posts that they have. Notice here, because I'm the teacher and I posted that I'm not going to need to approve any posts. And you might have seen me approve posts in the part one getting started. But since I'm the teacher, I, I'm, I'm posting. I don't need to approve my own posts. But all of my students, I can still have that turned approve the post by going to the wrench and um, clicking on new items require approval. That's a default that's turned on. If I wanted to turn that off, I'd simply click on it. Again, you can go through all of those settings and determine, you know, your, have your teacher autonomy and determine what you would like to have. So there's a post that I added. I played around. It's okay for you to play around, add those posts. You can delete any of the posts you want to delete. Um, you know, just play for a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. You would also want to make sure that your devices have Seesaw on them and that just like when we connected the first time that the microphone and the camera tool are enabled. So whatever you need to say to say, yes, I want to use those, make sure you do that. If you are, it says print and hang your class QR poster, that would be for anyone who is not using the Google or not using the email sign in. That's the class code QR poster. And then complete the Seesaw student challenge with your class. Well, if I look at the next page, like it says, that's where I'm gonna find that student challenge. And um, what, we want to think about here is we're getting students ready to um you know to really dive into seesaw but also we're setting up our routine we're setting up the procedures for our thought process when adding to seesaw even before we dive into actually adding a post or getting in. So what's the purpose for keeping up a portfolio? Seesaw is a portfolio to capture that learning, to create, to reflect, to demonstrate. And what's our purpose? So having a conversation, and you know, I know time is precious in middle and high school. Trust me, I understand. I live the bell schedule. So 10 minutes you know, 10 minutes at the beginning of a class. Intentionally planning that in is something I found I needed to do. Because if I just was like, well, we'll see if there's time, it time didn't just, you know, come out of thin air. You know what that's like. So intentionally planning um, for your lesson one. Lesson one doesn't have to be day one of school. Lesson one is the first day you choose lesson one to be. Lesson two, signing in and signing out. That's just 10 minutes to get them in, get them into their accounts, sign in, get them out, right? How do I sign in? How do I sign out? And again, lesson two might not be on day two. It might not be the day after lesson one. It's when do I have another block of 10 minutes I can dedicate to this? We talked about portfolios two days ago, but you're on an A-B schedule and you're not going to see them for two days. So that's fine. You know, all of our, our, our little ins and outs of how our own school buildings work, we can, we can work around that with Seesaw. It's so flexible to um, make this work and get you started and get your students in as well. So once the students are in, then what are my expectations for devices and posts? Like, I just need to go over the rules here. As the teacher, what do you want? What are appropriate behaviors? How do you want them to use devices? Maybe it's your devices that you got through a grant, so you're really super protective of them. Maybe it's school devices that you should be, you know, pretty cautious and protective over. Maybe it's their own devices. What are your expectations when they walk through the room? Are they just grabbing and using their device at will? Do you have a, a you know, a red light, green light kind of situation where maybe green is we're going to use the device right away today so pull it out get it started red is keep it shut off I don't want to see it all day yellow would be hey we're going to use it but I'll tell you when so there's different kinds of routines and procedures you could use and this is a really great just quick five minutes um, you know and building up to okay now the fourth time this is where we can take a picture and 
add some labels. And this is the same activity that we did in our getting started part one, where you took a picture and added labels. This is a student taking a picture of themselves, taking that selfie, adding some text labels to describe themselves, and then adding adding it into their um, into their portfolio. So we're trying to get you comfortable with it so that your students can be comfortable. Setting and recording goals. So that would be using the draw tool by just capturing um, and sketching out what are some goals they have for your class, what are goals they have in science or in um, you know, AP Calc or whatever it might be that you're teaching that you can use Seesaw for um, based off of your curriculum, your content area. Um, and then eventually getting into that video tool. Now notice when we look at the time for these, um, setting and recording goals takes a little bit longer than just snapping a picture, right? Your students are gonna be a little bit more self-aware and self-conscious about what they want these quote, drawings to look like. So, um, you know, and you can change this, adjust it, you know, make it be your own, of course, but they're gonna need a little bit more time for that. So 20 minutes is a suggestion, but you work in however you want to work it in. Same with the video tool. And then finally, the last thing would be connecting those families. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in just a second. When I just continue to scroll down here, um, it does talk about some ideas for your classroom and the Seesaw Activity Library that has those built-in activities for your students. We'll get into that here in just a moment. And then some next steps with some badges and things like that for you and of course our social media. Finally, at the end here, we have some printables that go along with those activities activities or those tasks that you could have your students do. These are really great to print out and have maybe around the room or hanging in, you know, on your wall or, you know, maybe you just want students to do this in stations or a couple kids each day go back to the back table and, and do these activities and that's completely fine as well. I think it's, a, you know, again, up to you on how you use this Getting Started Guide, but the idea with these tasks and these lessons are for you to build upon them and just progressively add in some more complex things and make it work for, for your content, of course. Um, if you have, you know, want to get some ideas on how to do that, reach out on social media. We're happy to help with all of that, uh, but I think that it's, um, that's it's important to um, you know just have a place to a springboard to jump off on all right let's get back here and see where we're headed next um, connecting families is something that um, I think is underrated in middle and high school and yes we do want our students to become independent and self-sufficient but their parents they actually want to know what's going on and they might not get all the pieces to the puzzle and I found that connecting my middle school families, I had less email, I had uh, less questioning, and I wasn't posting every day, and my students weren't posting every day, but I was able to get those families in and have them see what we were doing and have them be a part of our classroom enough that they felt comfortable knowing that their children were on the right path and in the right track and that I was looking out for their child as well. So I'm gonna go back in here um, into our class live and just share with you um, right down at the bottom of the teacher was where we added our students, that plus students. But right here is where we would add our families. And just to keep in mind, um, when I click on that, this is where I would turn on my family access. What does that mean though? Families would see, all of the posts that their child is posting. So when you're signing up with Google and or email, they're just they're connected to their own child. When you're signing up with the class QR code, they're connecting with their own child. So they're not seeing a whole big list of everyone in the class. I promise you that. Families get notified about new posts, but the cool thing about that, in my opinion, is they choose when they want to get notified and how they get notified. So do they want it through an email? Do they want it through a, um, a text message? Do they want it just, you know, pushed through the app and sent to them? And then teachers can choose to privately message families or send big announcements to families. So once you turn that on, it's a matter of connecting families. 
Um, Seesaw gives those paper invitations and a question that I get asked often is, well, how many languages? There's about 15 different languages in here and you know, you can take a look here of all these languages that are available to print out the, um, the family directions in. So um, for example, I have sent home traditional Chinese. I print those paper invites, but only one of my students needs traditional Chinese. I don't print the whole class, right? So what I would do is, even though the whole thing is in traditional Chinese, I want to show you this because I think this is kind of cool and important. Um, even though the whole thing is in there as traditional Chinese, what I can do is just scan and look where is the student that needs it. I know what their family home language is, or they've Past. They said, hey, that's actually what happened in my classroom. They said, hey, um, is there, you know, I know you mentioned that if our families needed um, a different language and Andrea's family needed it, then here's the directions in traditional Chinese for Andrea's family. And I just print um, whatever page this was, it said it was, you know, just print page three or whatever it might be. So I don't have to print the whole class. Um, I did have really great success getting families connected um, in my middle school classroom, and I didn't bombard, or I didn't feel like I bombarded families, but I was able to send announcements to families and um, make them feel a part of it, and I was also able to send announcements to um, to students as well. So I thought that was um, that was pretty awesome and could choose. I just want to send this to students. I want to send it to families and students. And I thought, you know, that it worked really well for what I needed in um, in my middle school setting. Uh, so these are some things that um, I just wanted to share with you as well. Uh, before you actually invite families, you might want to make sure that there's a post already in there so they don't join Seesaw and they're like, uh, so now what, right? It could be a post from you, and if you choose to post, here's two ideas, welcoming families with a video or a post, like just a quick welcome message, picture of yourself, right, um, with an audio over top, just introducing yourself or actually a video, and they give you some ideas. What's most important here is that if you do this as a teacher, that you share it to all the students, and that tells you that there so that all the families can see the message that you're leaving. Um, this is also really pretty awesome as well. This web.seesaw.me slash families on a curriculum night, back to school night, where you have families' attentions who come to your building and they really want to learn, you can just use right directly from this page and you know scroll down through this page and there's a quick video, uh, also available in Spanish and French, but a quick video that will take families through, uh, a quick little overview of telling about Seesaw and and families connecting through the family app and you know even getting families connected right there on the spot um, and then allowing them to have the, um, the family app tutorial and um, more information about family connection. So that's just directly from the Seesaw site. Of course, you can certainly share that link, but if you have a captive audience, depending on your time schedule, right? We all know what that's like when you're um, living those situations. You could, you could choose to use that um, and find it pretty helpful. All right, I already showed you that, um, but there is a printable of how to invite families um, and show you the steps of how to get that all hooked up. And I gave you the quick version of that in my demo just a moment ago, including changing that language. So once you have those, you can print them out um, and all of that. I wanna very quickly show you the Seesaw Activity Library and then we'll, we'll get to some questions here in a minute. Um, so I wanna go in live to show it to you. Uh, the activities tab right here is what you would click um, or if you clicked add right you can assign an activity once you're ready for that but just to view activities you would go to this light bulb activities tab and then click on browse activity library the activity library has all kinds of amazing things. And since I'm I'm brand new, I'm getting started with Seesaw, right? Here's some brand new getting started for language arts and for math and for science. And if I scroll over here, I find other various um, 
content areas as well. You know, we try to hit the big general ones. Certainly, if you're um, something that doesn't apply, I'll bet you could find something in here through a search. Or if you're like, well, I don't teach ninth grade. It shows ninth grade because I believe I picked it when I set up this class. Um, maybe you, I clicked fourth grade, that was unintentional. Um, maybe you teach seventh grade, but maybe you teach seventh grade and you're, you teach computer science, here we go. Or maybe you wanna search for something very specific, um, you know, finding the greatest common factor for math and you wanna search that and then you can see varying levels of, um, you know, finding greatest common factor. But I think that the, what I like the best about this is when you're back and you're in that getting started and you're like, okay, well, this is the first time I'm using the getting started. I wanna just share what's happening. Here we go. It's going to bring up this activity. If I wanna save this for later, I can click the heart that saves it to my library and I can assign it to a class. What that means is if I have my first period class and my second period class, well, let's assign it to this class because guess what? I have seven students. I can click on this and assign it to my whole entire class. Um, I can also choose maybe only to assign it to certain students. Um, you know, there's other things that you can do with that as well. And then that's going to um, take it right to my class. So when they click on the activity tab, they see the um, they see the activity they're waiting. And the flow for activities is a little bit different. And we'll jump back over here and talk about that very quickly. And then we'll promise you moving on to questions because I know you have them, which is awesome. So how does activities work? Uh, the, the teacher, like you saw, shares the activity with the students. The students respond using all of those tools that you've already practiced with, and then the teachers approve student responses. And what I love about that feature is that all those responses are in the same place. But that activity library has so many ideas for you to, um, to use. You can, once you click on that heart and you save it to your library, you can even edit that activity to make it be your own. Uh, so if you're gonna be in as a teacher and you want to assign an activity, you can click that add button and click on assign activity. And then once students have added in, you'll be able to see all of those responses all in one place and be able to approve the ones you need to approve. You would also see, like you can read here, um, one did not respond and you'd be able to have that conversation and figure out, click on that, hey, who did not respond? Oh, well, they were absent. Who did not respond? Oh, well, they just didn't do it. And I love that it kind of monitors that for you because that's always, you know, a big thing, especially when you teach multiple courses and you have, you know, you're talking over a hundred students that you have to just keep up with. Seesaw's doing it for you here, and I love, love, love that. Um, so remember, when you go into activities the first time, they're going to give you some suggested getting started and progressively get a little bit um, further ahead. So um, we are um, live here and going to answer some questions live. But before we do that, I wanted to share with everyone who was joining through um, a recording the last three digits of the code, uh, which is one, two, three. So that six digit code has been provided for those who are watching through a recording. If you're watching live, no worries about the code. You'll get your certificate emailed to you. All right, so if you have not already visited help.seesaw.me, it is an amazing resource. And certainly feel free to connect not only with me, but with the community at large.